Welcome once again to another very low budget video. So for many, many years, I wondered what might be the most useful or significant word in the English language. So I went to my dictionary, one of my many dictionaries, and I looked through about roughly 160,000 words, and I determined <clears throat> in my warped mind that the word that I thought was most significant, maybe even the oldest word, is the word that. Okay? So I did a little study on the word that, and I discovered that the word that has five grammatical functions. All right? And in this series of videos, excuse me, I have covered the first three, and I started covering the fourth grammatical function. All right? And I came up with a term called abstract proform. Now I got that term because I analyzed the word that in its fourth grammatical function from three different perspectives. And the first perspective was that of abstract. In other words, the word that as an abstract. And I ended up getting the term abstract proform. Okay? That's just the first of three terms that you could use for the fourth grammatical function, okay? Now, we want to keep the analysis going, and we want to look at the word that on the integral level. In other words, basically on the surface level, on the level at which we leave it right where it is in the sentence, and we look at it right where it is, and um, take it at face value, okay? So, in the first part of our analysis. Okay, we got our abstract proform. Now we're on the second level, integral. Okay? And integral, integral means essential to completeness or formed as a unit with another part or parts. Okay? So we look at our sample sentence. The book that is blue is damaged. Okay? And we see here we have our head down. We see that the word that comes after our head noun, and we have kind of a little predicate here, uh, a, a partial predicate, or you could even say a phrase. It's okay to call it a phrase, because it's, it's incomplete. Now, we see right away, as I mentioned before, all right, that the word that, all right, is not in its base form. It's not in its base form. Ordinarily, in base form, the word that will come in front of or before the other significant word in the relationship, okay? So we see it's not in its base form. It's, um, it exhibits an unusual quality in grammar, something you don't see very often, if at all. So I call it not a base form, but a metaform. And, okay, it performs a metafunction. It's a metaform. And meta meaning more highly specialized form of or it can mean transforming or transcending. And in this case, uh, that's what it's doing. For this fourth grammatical function, it's gone way beyond because, first of all, I don't know any other word that can do this. And second of all, I don't know of any other word that has five grammatical functions. For example, the word following. Following has three standard grammatical functions, but only three. So I, I couldn't find another word that has five. All right, so the word that in this sample sentence, hold on a second, it's cold in here. It's really cold. Uh, my nose is getting weird. Okay, now in the sample sentence, okay, we say, what is that doing? What is the, the word that doing right there, plain and clear, without digging too deep, all right? Well, it's associating. It's associating. Associate means to bring together or into a relationship. And it can also mean to combine or join with other parts. So you see the word that, all right? That's our associator. It's associating your noun, your head noun, with that little partial predicate, that little phrase, okay? And that's exactly what it's doing. It's an associator. See how I cut to the chase, got right to the point? And that's unusual for me. It's an associator. It associates. 
I don't think of it as a relative pronoun because in its truest sense, it's not a pronoun, okay? So, so what is it? Well, let's look at another sentence here, or the, the same sentence, uh, blown up. The book that is blue is damaged. You have your head down, your associator, that, all right? And then you have this little predicate thing here, is blue, all right? And, and the core, all right, the core message that you're trying to impart by using that with this association, okay? The core message is, book is blue. And you see that your head down, all right, is playing the part of subject in this example, all right? Now here's another sample sentence. The plant that he purchased was a rose, all right? Plant your head down, that, your associator, and he purchased is actually a, a clause. It's a mini clause. Uh, you have your subject and your verb, all right? Now, the noun here in this case, the role that that noun plays in your core message is trying to be imparted, okay, is the object. He purchased plant. He purchased plant. Whereas up here, it was book is blue. So there's two different examples of how the word that works as an associator. And that's all it does. It's not, it's not a, uh, a genuine, really, really solid uh, pronoun. It's kind of pronominal, but it's not really, really spot on. Okay? So, we have the word that, we have my revised function terms, in other words, the functions are the same as in traditional, but I just renamed them, definite article, pro form adverb, or you could say pro adverb, that's okay, it doesn't matter, demonstrative pronoun, and now for our fourth grammatical function, we have two terms we can choose from, because the word that is doing both of these, we have abstract pro form, and we have associator. Okay, so in the next video then, we're going to look at the word that from the isolated perspective. And then we'll find another term. And then we'll, then we'll work it out and uh, see which one would be the best one to choose for our final term. Okay, that's it. I uh, hope to see you soon. Goodbye.